Hi guys, this is Sam from IDF Gear Review here. Today we went to Princess Medical to try out some bandages and tourniquets uh, and to see how effective they are using their sophisticated technology that they have available there. Let's take a look. Hey guys, I'm uh, Eddie from uh, Precis Medical. Uh, we are the uh, manufacturer of the Israeli bandage and today we are doing some reviews uh, about the common tourniquets, the tactical tourniquets in the market. Uh, thank you IDF Gear Review for being here and thank you uh, NCTM, National Center of Tactical Medicine, for being here and doing this uh, beautiful uh, day. Uh, we are happy to host you and let's start by uh, showing some tools that we have in the market. It's important and uh, to say that this is not all. There are many other uh, tourniquets. Uh, it's important to mention the uh, Coty Triple C approved tourniquets, like the Samex T, uh, which we don't have it here, and some others that are approved and we don't have them here, and we promise to do another review once we get them. So we're starting with the cat tourniquet. Uh, pretty common, uh, very well known at the market. Uh, we are using the HubMed simulator which gives us the uh, real-time feedback about uh, the pressure applied and the way uh, that the tourniquet was applied. I'm putting the uh, scenario of uh, hip bleeding, which is a major bleeding. So I'm ending the scenario and pressure applied is 510 millimeters mercury, uh, which was a good application. It's definitely doing the job. Okay, so we're trying the soft T white uh, 03. Okay, so we got a 420 millimeters mercury and a 806, sorry, 186 millimeters blood loss. Definitely works. So that's the Sitch tourniquet, uh, made in Ukraine, uh, based on the uh, Ukrainian battlefield experience on the last years. Features a male-female uh, Velcro, which I never seen, and a metallic wine glass. Let's try it on. Probably needs another turn. All right, and secure. So that's a 500 millimeters mercury with 136 millimeters blood loss. So yeah, it works. Unfortunately, there were two tourniquets today that we couldn't get to work. Uh, mainly the rat's tourniquet because we didn't have it. We do have it now, so we will be trying it out next time. And the S Mark, which is the Russian standard tourniquet. Unfortunately, we tried it out a couple of times. We couldn't get it to work. Uh, if one of you guys knows how the S Mark works, please let us know. We'd be more than happy to try it out. We're sure it works uh, since they're in standard use there. Uh, specifically with the rats, uh, because this is an argument raised, a lot of people argue that the rats is the only 
thing you have uh, to make a real tourniquet on something like a child, uh, especially in Africa and places like that where they may have very thin limbs uh, and, the cat, and the cat tourniquet isn't really effective. Uh, and many of the other tourniquets aren't effective enough because they don't, their minimal circumference is bigger uh, than that size. So one of the things Eddie told me was that you can actually use a Israeli bandage uh, because an Israeli bandage with the pressure bar does apply enough pressure. You can actually use an, uh, an Israeli bandage as a substitute uh, for tourniquet in that case. Uh, though that would be an exception. So what we're doing is a short testing of the uh, standard field dressing and the 4-inch Israeli bandage on the HapMed simulator which will measure the pressure applied on the, uh, on the wound side. So I'm sending it to a to bleeding scenario and uh, what am I doing is uh, basically two applications. At the end of the application, I will uh, stop the scenario and measure the, uh, the pressure applied. So I'm using the standard method that in the Israeli way called the Israeli flag. And that will apply uh, direct pressure on the wound. Okay, that was not supposed to happen. So, yeah, um, the pressure is superficial and it could not be read and the blood loss is uh, half a liter-ish. And what we're doing now is that we're doing the same scenario, same bleeding scenario and application of the Israeli bandage. Let's start the scenario. So what I'm doing is uh, tearing the package and it features the uh, double package in the military version. So that's, that's the standard field dressing of IDF for today. What I'm doing now is I'm changing directions with the pressure bar. I'm basically wrapping uh, the whole thing and closing with the closure bar. Um, so yeah, the uh, the scenario finished with 190 uh, millimeters uh, mercury, which is above the systolic blood pressure. And again, none of the bandage is supposed to be a tourniquet, but the pressure applied is uh, significant. So we we are using the HapMed simulator as a pressure measurement tool it's intended to measure uh, pressure applied by tourniquets uh, by no means by bandages but yet uh, this is the only tool that we have today to measure uh, the correct pressure and the pressure on the circumference, circumference. so what we got here is the uh, T3 bandage which is the next generation of the 4 inch uh, Israeli bandage and what it has inside it's a standard uh, packaging, again, uh, double sealed, and inside it actually has 
detachable pad, uh, which expands uh, double in size, and it could be detached for another wound. And in the self-application sleeve, there is hidden additional bandage that can be used for either wound packing or uh, bandaging another non-significant wound. At the end of the day, you're left with standard issue Israeli bandage. So basically, it's a hemorrhage control kit, includes two in one. And what could be added to the packaging is uh, a set of gloves for, for the lay user. I want to thank uh, Eddie from uh, Persis Medical for giving all this uh, information to us. Thank, thank you very much. much. It was a pleasure to host you. Same. And uh, thanks. Uh, to National Center of Tactical Medicine to arranging this uh, meeting, for arranging this meeting, and uh, thank you, Sam. Thank you Absolutely. again. Thanks.